Uh, well, the Tuda, or the Razadone, is, um, no, I'm excited about the fact that it's being um, rolled out for its efficacy in the pediatric population, because there haven't been many medications uh, in psychiatry, period, aimed at children, but for, for the category of depression associated with bipolar disorder, there are very few options that clinicians have. And so, for myself, this is a very exciting time because these things only happen once every 10 years or something like that. So we, uh, uh, we're excited about the fact that we have some positive data uh, being rolled out here at the EPA and being presented uh, with Tuda and, and children down to age 10 with bipolar disorder. And uh, for me, I've been studying this for a long time. I've been studying bipolar disorder in kids. I've been studying early presentations of bipolar disorder before the first full manic episode, um, studying bipolar depression in kids, and we know that it's been very difficult. So uh, in our previous trials, we've used other medications, and not with great success, and we haven't had too many placebo-controlled trials. So these data represent a, a big breakthrough in having a medication that is effective for kids with bipolar depression. The study was done in children down to age 10 and included uh, adolescents up to age 17. So 10 to 17, which incidentally is funny because people always wonder why is it 10 to 17. And it all goes back to, this is you know, totally unstructured, it all goes back to this meeting at the NIH. Um, I think Gay Carlson was one of the people who organized it um, back in 2000 or 2002. We got together and the FDA was there and they said, how, how young can you diagnose bipolar disorder? And we had a bunch of experts there, and we had a bunch of different answers. Some people said down to age six, some people said eight, some people said 12. And you know, there's no hard and fast age where you can't diagnose or you can. It just becomes more difficult the younger you get. And so eventually, before we were allowed to leave the room, we had to agree on a number, and we all agreed on 10. It was a nice kind of right in there. Old enough to go ahead and be able to report on symptoms, but young enough to still say, hey, it's not 12 or 13, it's down to age. So that's how 10 to 17 came about. But clearly, you know, it can happen before age 10 for sure. Um, but it is harder to recognize the younger and younger you get. Right, so there's been only one really good epidemiologic study, but there's been a bunch of other studies too that suggest that in total, it's probably somewhere between one and 2% of children and adolescents. As far as the younger kids, it's not as clear. Uh, Clearly, the instance rises as you go up into adolescence. So we usually use a number between one and two percent, um, and you know, which makes it not rare, not common, but it's not uncommon. So it's something that's found pretty often, more often than you would think. I was actually a member of the Data Safety Monitoring Board, and so I was more aware of the safety aspects of it. But uh, the, the data that are presented here are the efficacy and safety data, uh, both. And uh, the end result is that uh, I'm, not the, I'm not presenting the poster or an expert on the data, but uh, I have slides and whatnot. Um, but uh, but the, 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 the bottom line is that, you know, a Latuda is more effective than placebo in reducing the depressive symptoms measured by the children's depression rating scale. Um, of children aged 10 to 17 who all have bipolar disorder, but yet they have the depressive pull of that uh, disease. And so um, it was a monotherapy study. It was an eight-week study. Um, and the side effect profile uh, was favorable in the fact that uh, one of the first things we look at with uh, atypical antipsychotics or second-generation antipsychotics is we look at the weight gain profile because so many of them have weight gain or metabolic effects. And the positive outcome from this trial was that lorazidone did not seem to have that kind of same profile, it had very low levels of weight gain and no real metabolic effects compared to uh, the other trials. And so it presents a really good alternative to some other medications that we had been using uh, in this population. That, that is the idea, and there, I know that the company is looking at longer term data now, uh, up to a year. And that would be really important because that's real world data. That's how we treat people in the real world. 
Um, but that is the idea that any time that you have a medication that's used for bipolar disorder, including uh, uh, mania or depression, that you would continue the medication. And the question is, well, how long would you continue the medication? And that's what we need more data then as far as how it does in preventing. This is only the acute efficacy data that's being presented here over eight weeks showing that it does alleviate symptoms of depression. But uh, what we need more now are longer term data and longer term studies that look at preventing relapse of depression and mania. Uh, and those, those kind of data would help us decide, well, how long do we keep it on and when do we start tapering it off or how do we manage this medication long term? Well, that's something that you should definitely discuss with your doctor as far as any kind of contraindications or, uh, or interactions. The, the, the good news is that, um, at least with children usually, you know, they have fewer medical problems as far as liver problems or kidney problems and things like that most of the time. So it's not as much an issue as, and also they're usually not taking other medications besides psychiatric medications. So it's usually not as much an issue, but certainly you have to be on the watch out for any kinds of potential interactions but um, that's not, actually, I'm not really even aware of that right now because, again, with my, with my kids that I treat, they don't really have those conditions, so I don't have to worry about that. But, um, but what you want to make sure, though, is you want to make sure that um, you're treating the right disorder. So I think the, the most challenging part is getting the right diagnosis down and making sure you're making the right diagnosis. As I mentioned, it, it does get harder the younger and younger the patient is because then it's harder to recognize sort of those classic adult signs of mania that you would say is bipolar disorder, right? Because it, it, in, at least in the DSM, mania is the hallmark of bipolar disorder. If you have mania, you have it, right? The ICD is not quite the case, but uh, DSM it is. So then looking for mania, you have to then, as you get younger, sort of adjust your expectations. So you're not going to see uh, you know, a 10 year old who's manic look like an 18 year old who's manic, you know. They might not um, be doing the same things, but if you look at their level of functioning, they may be doing similar things within their own developmental stage. Uh, most commonly used example is like a 10 year old is not going to be using their credit card to max out on spending because they don't have credit cards or they don't, buying things is not really their, their thing. An 18 year old might, 18 year old might have uh, hypersexuality and have more sexual relations, get into trouble. Ten-year-old probably not, but they could show their own hypersexuality in different kinds of ways. You know, um, also the trouble that a ten-year-old would get into might be more limited to what's going on at home, uh, poor judgment, risky behavior at home. Whereas for an eighteen-year-old, you'll see it driving or out with friends or out and about uh, in college, for example. Um, so if you take the DSM criteria for mania and you apply it to a younger population in an age-appropriate manner, that's how most of us feel that like you can make, be pretty certain of the diagnosis. You just have to be aware of the developmental stages that normally occur throughout childhood and adolescent and then make the leap there. So symptoms such as um, grandiosity, you know, which is a cardinal symptom of mania, will differ between an 18-year-old and a 10-year-old. Uh, like a 10-year-old who says, you know, um, I've got superhuman power. Sometimes they're just joking or playing, but if an 18-year-old says that, it runs around in a in a cape, then you think maybe that's, a, that's grandiosity. Um, other kinds of symptoms are things like racing thoughts, and children typically don't talk about having racing thoughts. You have to ask them and elicit it. The younger you are, the more confusing it can be when their thoughts are going so fast and it's jumbled. So you might have to ask them to, you know, is your brain filled with a lot of confusion? Are things going very fast? Because I feel like it's a busy city in your head. Um, whereas for Adolescents, you may see more outward manifestation of that with the rapid speech and then jumping from topic to topic, and you may, it may be more obvious that you don't have to ask.